My name is Alex Hoffman, and today we're going to be talking about how to write better tests with TDD. So what is TDD? TDD stands for Test Driven Development. At its most basic form, it's writing tests to drive development in small feedback cycles. So before we get going, by quick show of hands, who thinks they use TDD on a regular basis? Not a lot of hands. Hopefully, at the end of the talk, there's going to be some more of those. So, Rob Martin, author of the Agile Manifesto, defined TDD with the following three rules. One, you're not allowed to write any production code unless it is to make a failing unit test pass. Two, you're not allowed to write any more of a unit test than is sufficient to fail. Three, you're not allowed to write any more production code than is sufficient to pass the one failing unit test. And basically, what this gives us is something called a red-green refactor cycle. Here's how it works. We start off by writing a failing unit test. That's our red. Then we write the minimal amount of code that's needed to make that unit test pass. We run our tests, and we have our green passing tests. And then we rinse and repeat. We do this over and over and over again until we get to a point where we can no longer write a test that fails our code but meets our acceptance criteria. And at that point, we're done, and our code is perfect. So a little bit about me. This is me. Aren't I beautiful? I am the JavaScript capability lead at Accelerate Consulting in Washington, DC. I'm a JavaScript enthusiast and also the organizer of the Angular DC meetup group. I'm a certified Scrum master and a certified Scrum developer. I like sports, good food, and losing at pub trivia on a weekly basis. There's my Twitter, and there's my GitHub. They're the same because I wanted to make it easy for you guys. So let's get into a quick example of our red-green refactor. Let's say we have a function, number plus one. The function is going to do what it says. It's going to take in a number, and it's going to add one to it. What's the first test we would write? Our red. Maybe given an input of three, expect an output of four. Now, what's the minimal amount of code that we can write to get that test to pass? Return four. So we run our test. It passes. Time to write a second test. Maybe this time we write, given an input of 10, expect an output of 11. Now we go back, and we refactor our code. Return input plus one. So we run our tests again. Green, they're passing. However, now we've reached a point where we can't think of any more tests that will fail our code but meet our acceptance criteria. So there's a red-green refactor. Awesome. Let's look at a second example. However, this time, we're going to look at what happens when you don't TDD. Let's look at an example of writing your tests to your code. Let's say we have a function. It takes in a number. If the number is even, it's going to return true. Otherwise, it's going to return false. What are the tests we would write for that? Maybe given an even input, expect an output of true. And given an odd input, expect an output of false. Pretty basic, pretty simple. However, what were our requirements for that piece of code? Take a number input, output true if it's Tuesday, output false if it's not Tuesday. So our code's super broken. And now we just wrote two tests that say that our broken code is actually working. When that bug pops up in a month or so, it's going to be twice as hard to find it because our tests say that it works. And you might be thinking to yourself, Alex, this would never happen. And yeah, it's a little bit of an extreme example. I don't know how you get from uh, Tuesday to even odd. But it's not very far from things I've seen a lot on real life projects when you have a lot of developers. Developer writes a piece of code, doesn't test it. Three months later, another developer comes in and edits that code, maybe because they're wanting, trying to reuse it for their own purposes, or because there's more acceptance criteria that came in. Another three months go by, and that first developer comes back and says, oh, shoot, I forgot to write tests for this. I'm going to write tests now. There's no way that developer remembers the requirements that he started with or knows anything about what his friend did to the code. So he's just going to write it straight to the test, and you end up with a scenario like this. So why do we do TDD? Basically, if I can give you one takeaway from today's talk, you want your code to follow your requirements. At the end of the day, if your code does what it's supposed to do, everything's going to work great. And doing TDD helps you get that. There are also some added benefits. It's going to help how you think about code on a more granular level. Because we're doing that red-green refactor and doing it small piece by small piece, it's going to improve the, how we think about our code. Also, it's going to make your code more readable for a similar reason. There's going to be a logic to your code. It's going to be small step by small step. And when other developers come in to look at your code, it's going to be easier for them to understand than, say, if you threw 
200 lines of code out there all at once in just any random order. It's also going to prevent unnecessary code or complications because we're doing the minimal amount of code that's needed to pass each test. We're only going to have one small piece of code at a time, and you're not going to end up with those for loops that do nothing that I'm sure most of you have seen on some project. Not saying that you do it. I do it maybe, but not you guys. So I want to look at one last example. And this is an example of something that I was actually tasked with on a project that I was working on recently. Uh, here's the gherkin for the issue. Basically, it's a date gap analysis. I was given a start date, an end date, and some date gaps. And from those, uh, I'm sorry, date ranges. And from those date ranges, I had to find the date gaps that weren't covered by those date ranges. And here's the test suite that I came up with. As you can see, it's pretty robust. We're not going to look at all of them, but a few. I did want to show you all the tests to show that, hey, this is, this is a lot of tests. This, this code is really well tested. But let's dive into a few tests. The first one, when there are no gaps, then return an empty array. So this is our baseline test. This is the most basic thing. And you'd be surprised at how many times developers miss this test when they're testing after they write their code. Because you want to get into the meat of your code. You want to test like the hard stuff that you just did, or try and find the edge cases, and you forget about poor little what happens in a basic case. So that's not the case when you're doing test-driven development, because this is one of the first tests that you write. Second test I want to look at. When the date ranges are not in sorted order, then properly return all gaps. So this was a pretty big edge case for me, and I can guarantee I would not have found it if I wasn't doing test-driven development. When you write code before you test, you want to think that our code is perfect. We're, we're developers. We're flawless. However, that's not always the case. And in order to find these edge cases, you have to get over a mental hurdle. But when you're doing test-driven development, it's a little bit different. Part of your cycle, your development cycle, is to break your test. You can't even write any code before you write a breaking test. And that helps you get some of these edge cases. You don't have to get over that mental hurdle. It's part of your process. Last test I want to look at. When there is a one-day date gap, then return a gap with the same start and end date. Why is this one important? Because it matches up exactly with one of our scenarios that we were given. There's nothing more confidence building at the end of writing a piece of code or writing an entire project than being able to say, I know it works, because for everything that I was asked to do or thought about doing, I wrote a test for it, and I can run that test, and I say, I know it works, so everything must be working properly. That's not 100% accurate, but you're not going to get it 100% of the time, but that's going to give you such a high level of confidence that you wouldn't get if you weren't doing test-driven development. So let's be practical for a second. Not everyone is going to be able to do test-driven development all the time. We can see that by the low show of hands when I asked who was doing it. And that makes sense. Test-driven development takes time, and sometimes you have to put out code three weeks ago and you're still working on it. And it's, it's just not going to happen. In, if you're in such a situation, I would say do test-driven development when you can. Even doing test-driven development part of the time is going to help you grow as a developer and a tester. If you do test-driven development, let's say 50% of the time, you're going to be better at catching those edge cases when you're doing your tests later, and you're not doing test-driven development. Your code's going to end up being more readable. There are certain scenarios that are pretty obvious for, hey, good cases to do test-driven development if you have to pick and choose. When you have branching logic, it obviously works really well. You have branches of your logic that match up exactly with tests, and it just runs really smoothly. Also, complex situations. Good example being the date math thing that we just looked at. Date math is hard. Date math is stupid. Date math never works the way you think it's going to, but date math is a perfect example of when to use test-driven development. And basically, anywhere where you have low effort but high impact, use test-driven development for that. TBFA, too boring, fell asleep. So anyone who passed out as soon as I started talking about tests, you can wake up now. I'm about to just give you the bullet points, and you can get out of here. First, what is test-driven development? It's, our, it's writing tests, small feedback cycles, our red-green development, our red-green refactor development. Because we're writing tests before we code, we're going to retest all our requirements. And at the end of the day, the most important thing is that our code does what it's supposed to do. Test-driven development is going to give you that. Also, you're going to have the added benefits. It's going to help how you think about coding and testing. It's going to really improve your readability. And it's going to increase your chances of catching those edge cases. Also, it promotes world peace, which is pretty obvious. I'm not going to go into that. So thank you all for joining me today. Uh, once again, my name is Alex Hoffman. And 
Also, if you want to come talk to me or pick my brain about anything or quiz me or whatever, please come talk to me. I don't bite. So thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you.